Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. Now in our 87th year of continuous broadcasting, making this one of the oldest weekly radio church services in the nation. Your liturgist is Pastor David Peters. The Lutheran Radio Choir, under the direction of Marie Zelmer, will open by singing hymn number 55 in Christian worship, entitled, O Come, All Ye Faithful. On this, the second Sunday after Christmas and first Sunday of the new calendar year, we focus our meditation once again on this amazing miracle, that the Almighty God entered his own creation through the womb of a virgin, and God himself became fully human as well as fully divine, true God and true man in one person. Our guest speaker this morning is the Reverend Michael Zarling who serves as pastor at the Evangelical Lutheran Church of the Epiphany in Racine, Wisconsin. Stay tuned as Pastor Zarling talks about St. John's eternal perspective of the birth of Jesus Christ in his sermon entitled, Christmas from Eternity's Point of View. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now sing hymn number 80, Angels from the Realms of Glory. in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, 
and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Listen now to God's holy word as he inspired the Old Testament prophet Micah to write for us in chapter 5, beginning with verse 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely. For then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson was inspired by the Holy Spirit to be written in Hebrews chapter 2, beginning with the 10th verse. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might destroy him who holds the power of death. That is the devil and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson will serve as the text for Pastor Zarling's sermon today. It is written by St. John in chapter one, beginning with verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out saying, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only who is at the father's side has made him known. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, Christ. Let us join in confessing our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Pastor Zarling will speak on the theme, Christmas from Eternity's Point of View, immediately after the choir sings hymn number 50, Once in Royal David's City. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. My dear Christian friends, during Advent, Matthew tells us the Christmas story from Joseph's point of view. On Christmas Eve, Luke tells us the Christmas story from Mary's point of view. Today we hear the Christmas story from eternity's point of view through John. When we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, we listen in as the angel Gabriel tells the lowly Virgin Mary that God has chosen her to be, a nut, to be the mother of his eternal son. We watch Joseph wrestle over the question to divorce his betrothed wife who is pregnant with a child he knows is not his until an angel in a dream tells him to take Mary as his wife, for the child is God's own son. We follow the couple to Bethlehem and see the newborn Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger because there is no room in the inn. We hear about angels, shepherds, and wise men, but the Gospel of John shows us Christ's birth from a different point of view. John takes us to the beginning of time and introduces us to the Word, the mighty Son of God who created all things. John's Gospel begins, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. For the next 12 verses, John describes the child of Christmas according to his divine nature as the Son of God. He is the mighty Word of God, the Eternal Son. Everything in heaven and earth was created through him. He is the light of men. Now, as John reaches the pivotal moment in all of human history, he tells us in verse 14, the word became flesh. In that great, unfathomable mystery, Jesus takes our human nature into his divinity. He is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the womb of the Virgin Mary. That is the mystery of Christmas, the majesty of God's gracious plan to save us from our sin. God's son became human just like us. As a human, he could place himself under God's law and earn our place in heaven by his perfect life. As a human, he could take our place under God's wrath, suffering and dying for our sins and disobedience. Being God, his shed blood was able to pay for the sins of the whole world. Being God, he could and did defeat Satan, sin, and hell for all of us. Being both the Son of God and the Son of Man, through faith in this God-man, we are adopted as God's sons and daughters. John continues, And the Word made his dwelling among us. Jesus' birth in Bethlehem was not the first time he dwelt among us in our world. He appears for the first time in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord ministering to Hagar in her distress. He makes the unseen God known by loving the unloved, caring for the abandoned, and helping the helpless. He appears to Moses in the burning bush to give him direction in his life as the chosen leader of God's chosen people. He is at the edge of the Israelite camp, 
guiding and protecting them for 40 years of wandering as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. But now this will be how Jesus appears for all eternity as both God and man. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father as God and man. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead as we confess in the Nicene Creed. Verse 14 continues, We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. How would you like to lift up your eyes any time of day or night and look upon the glory of God? The Israelites who left Egypt enjoyed that privilege for 40 years. The Lord revealed his glory in the pillar that led them across the wilderness to the promised land. By day, it was a pillar of cloud. By night, a pillar of fire. On that first Christmas, God's glory shone briefly around the shepherds in the fields outside Bethlehem. But when they ran into the little town, they saw nothing special. Just an ordinary-looking baby who was wrapped in swaddling claws and lying in a manger. No halo shone around his head. The fullness of the deity was concealed within the, the dwelling of Jesus' infant body. His glory as the Son of God would not be revealed until his baptism in the Jordan River. Only then did he begin revealing his divine glory through the epiphany of his words and miracles, demonstrating his power over disease, accidents, nature, demons, and even death. Today, Christ's glory is hidden in common, ordinary things like the words of the Bible, the water of holy baptism, and the bread and wine of holy communion. But it is through these common, ordinary things that we will one day gaze upon the glory of the one and only. John writes in his gospel, From the fullness of his grace we have all received one blessing after another. The fact that God became human and actually lived here among us is the mystery and wonder of Christmas. But how often do we lose sight of that mystery after we celebrate Christmas, put away the decorations, and go back to our normal day-to-day lives? It's almost as if Christmas never came and everything goes on the same. If Christmas is merely recalling God's Son becoming human and being born in Bethlehem, then we are missing something truly significant. The important thing is to remember why he came and what he accomplished in those brief 33 years he dwelt among us. Unless we look in the right place, it looks as though his life really did not change much of anything in our world. There is still suffering, sickness, and death. There is still misunderstanding, fear, and hate. There is still crime, violence, and war, and much of that within our own homes. All of these evils flow from our first parents' sinful disobedience when Adam and Eve ate the fruit God had forbidden and continue today through all of our sins. Jesus came to deal with that sin, and to deal with the wrath of God it stirs. Jesus came to take our place, to carry our guilt and our sins to the cross, and to suffer God's wrath that we deserve, to pay the debt that we could never repay. He did it all out of pure, undeserved love and mercy. And he is always here to give us the fullness of his love and grace. When you read John chapter 1, it is extremely interesting that though John is writing about Jesus, he waits until verse 17 to actually name him. The word, the Son of God, the light of the world, has remained unnamed. But finally, the word emerges from the shadows and is revealed in the spotlight. As John writes, For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. John points out that Jesus came to replace the Old Testament law given to Moses on Mount Sinai. 
knowing that neither the Israelites of old or we in the new year of 2015 can keep God's laws perfectly, God sent his son as the fulfillment of his laws. As great as Moses was, he was merely the instrument through which God gave his people the knowledge of his laws. Jesus, the babe of Bethlehem, was different. He was the son of God himself, and he came into our world bringing grace and truth. He fulfilled the laws of Moses and completed the salvation first promised to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. From the cross, his truth and grace pours out like an unending fountain for all time. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known, John writes. Once, Moses was able to gaze upon God's back, but not upon God's face. The gracious God was protecting his servant Moses when he told him, You cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. Like staring into the sun, the sinner Moses could not tolerate looking upon the full expression of God's holiness and glory, only a portion of it. But Christmas marks the birth of a new man, one who has spent all eternity looking upon the beauty of God's glorious face. The word has come to make his father known to us. None of us have ever seen God. Left to our own experience and imagination, none of us has even come close to knowing what God is really like. The struggles and difficulties of life distort his true image. He comes off looking angry and vindictive on one hand or unknowing and uncaring on the other. But Jesus came at Christmas to make God known to us. He revealed him as our merciful, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, the God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. This, too, is the Christmas story. The Christmas story, not from Joseph or Mary's point of view. The Christmas story, from eternity's point of view. For the Christ child is God in the flesh, the Word dwelling with us, the fullness of God's grace, making the Father known to us. Amen. Let us pray. Dearest Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, we praise you as the eternal Word of God in human flesh, the knowledge that you would be scorned, ridiculed, rejected, and executed upon a cross did not deter you from taking on human flesh in the virgin's womb in order to become one of us. As true God and true man in one person, you gave yourself as our sinless substitute under God's holy law. You obeyed your heavenly Father's holy law perfectly, establishing true righteousness for us. You suffered and died to pay the penalty we deserved for our countless sins and you rose back to life to declare us not guilty. Thank you for your humble and willing self-sacrifice for us. Thank you for rising to life for us, guaranteeing that because you live, we also shall live. Lord Jesus, in this new year, give us your grace and strength to avoid sin and to live righteous lives. May your Holy Spirit fill us with love and humility to serve you with thankful and willing hearts. Protect us from all danger and from every evil attack by Satan, by the world, and by our own sinful flesh. And keep us safe and secure in the palms of your almighty hands now and forever. Hear these petitions and all of our prayers for the sake of your holy name. Amen. And together we pray the prayer that our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lutheran Radio Committee is pleased to offer you a copy of today's sermon by Pastor Zarling. If you would like a free copy, 
If you'd like a free gift, or if you'd like to keep hearing our messages week after week, please write to us. And if possible, please send a tax-deductible contribution to the Lutheran Radio Committee, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. That's Lutheran Radio Committee, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. We'd love to have you check out our website at www.lrcsonline.org. That's lrcsonline.org. You have been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church Service coming from the chapel at Wisconsin Lutheran College. Your liturgist was Pastor David Peters. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now close by singing hymn number 72, O Lord, our Father, thanks and praise. May our triune God be with you and yours throughout this new year. The preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. This program has always relied heavily on your financial gifts to produce and present these broadcasts. Recently, we've fallen on challenging financial times. Although we've been blessed with your monetary gifts, we need to continue to receive $400 per week from you, our listeners, to allow our ministry to continue. Please prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.